Good day, YouTube. This is Darren. My amateur radio call sign is N4VFR. In this video, I'm going to show you the sounds of RFI in the shack. Well, yesterday, I moved my 40 meters sky loop and I had to cut off about 21 feet 9 inches off of the, uh, the loop. And when I came into the shack and tuned up on 20 meters to get on FT8, I started getting a loud hum and it scared me. Um, it was really loud <laughs> that uh, it was broadcasting over my powered speakers. I brought down the power so it, it, it cured the hum a little bit, but it's noticeable. Let me show you and share with you my frustrations, what I have now, RFI in the shack. You're looking at my Mercury Lux, and on the bottom is the uh, Palstar HF Auto. I also have a microphone that's near the speakers, so when I transmit on this FT8, you can hear the RFI hum a lot clearer. Here we go, I'm gonna transmit, uh, let's take a look. I'll just hit the tune button. What I'm doing now, I'm just moving my side uh, shelf here because um, I'm gonna show you what I got that's connected to the antenna so far. I'm strong. I'm going to lift this table. Here's the uh, spaghetti mess that's always behind everyone's shack. So this is the Anon 200. This is the Mercury tuner. And this is the um, HF Auto. So coming out from the output, that's the output there. Okay. This is the output coax. All the spaghetti. I have one freestanding ferrite. Okay. And uh, I am going to a, a common mode uh, ballon, common mode current ballon. This is a ballon design. Yes, I bought this. I did not get this for free. This is like free advertisement, I guess. But uh, this is model 1116 Delta Indio. They're SO239s on both ends, okay? And then after this, it's this coax here, the green, the green little strip, and it's going through the pass-through. Once that coax passes through the bulkhead, it goes through my junction box and all the way up to the second floor and is connected to the Ballon Design 4 to 1 Ballon. And that's my 40 meter sky loop. So how do I remedy this? This is what I got. I have some more ferrites. All right, so we got a bunch of these ferrites all sorts and I'm not sure I'm gonna put them on the the coax because I already have a current ballon here's more various sizes okay uh, I got this off of Amazon so I'm gonna use some of this and also, these are toroids. So the one I got here is the FT240-43. I went ahead and labeled each one of them. I just took a, a permanent marker and I wrote it in the back of each one. 240-43 is what I got. So I'm going to start off with these two. I'm going to tape these two together and uh, pass my 
speaker wires through here several times. I want to start off by just stacking these toroids together. I'm just going to use two. Get some electrical tape. It'll work. So these are stuck together. And I'm going to get that speaker wire. It's a uh, speaker wire. So there's a cable that connects from this speaker and it goes to this speaker right here. I'm going to focus on the wires that's going to and from this speaker. This is a powered speaker. So there's a cable that goes to here. That's the master. And then it goes to... So that's the second speaker. Okay, so the only connections we have in the back is this um, four pin. I've already got it disconnected and it's right here. The four pin. So this is all I got to work with here because if I pull this any further, it's, it's pulling the speaker. So I got to work with what I got here and not make it too tight where I can't move the speakers around. This is how I'm going to do this. Take the speaker wire, go through the toroids as much as I can, making sure I have some slack, okay, and I'm going to take a zip tie and a zip tie one. This is the, the base, basically I'm going to um, keep it intact so it doesn't move on me. And now I'm just going to wrap it around um, the toroids. But let me go ahead and disconnect the speaker from the, the wire from the speaker so I have more room to work on it on the table. As I was doing this, when I took out the cables, they're both the same, okay? Uh, it's gonna be hard for you to see it, but they're both the same, so I can interconnect them. I can connect them like this, or I can switch them around and connect them like this. And wouldn't it be better to put the toroids to the power speaker to avoid RF going to this speaker so basically choking it i'm creating a choke and uh yeah so that's what i'm going to do for now i'm just going to build this toroid and then i'm going to put this in the one that has the toroids closer to the connector towards the powered speaker. I'm just looping it through. You want to make it as tight as possible. Okay, I'm going to stop at nine. This is nine pass throughs. And then I'm just going to zip tie the end.
Okay, there it is. I'm just going to evenly space them out, just like that, and then make my connection. So there's two ends, right? You got the shorter end and you got the longer end. The shorter end is going to be connected to the speaker right here to my left side. And then the longer end will be connected to the speaker for the right side. Okay, in the back of these speakers, I already have the audio cable input. You see how I have some already, the ferrites on this. And this is going to go to my speaker. And you know what I can also do with this? Put the toroid on this. This is the power cable, the DCN. I already have one there. Maybe it's kind of loose. All right. Uh, I can put another one here. And take a look at my mic on the Scarlet. See, I got a double ferrite. Uh, correction, I got a double toroid here. And I also have a ferrite attached. What we're looking at here, this is the uh, ProSonus Aris Sub 8. This is my subwoofer. So the input coming from my Scarlet, okay, these are TRS lines, okay, that's the input, the output, these gray wires, they have some ferrite beads here wrapped, another one here with those gray wires are wrapped, and that's going, this cable is going up, it comes up here to this cable, that gray one, and it's hooked up to my new toroid that I made. Again, that's a double stacked and a couple of ferrite beads to the 3.5 millimeter that goes to the input, the input there. Now, the power cables, this is the power cable. So I put some here, a couple of turns there because they had uh, any wires connected to this, you know, it's, it's going to receive a signal and become an antenna. So I'm trying to eliminate that. That's why, man, it's stacked all the way to the plug. So let's go to the back and let's take a look. Looking behind the table, this is the power source for my speakers. And I have some ferrite beads wrap. It's already plugged in. The output, I have more ferrite beads. Okay, now I'm gonna put them all back together and let's test it out again. Okay, we're back on. We're gonna tune with the amplifier on. I still hear the hum coming out of the speakers. Let me turn off the speakers. Speakers off. And the speakers back on. Okay. I'm going to test the audio to see if I hear any kind of uh, RF noise on 20 meters. You won't be able to hear the audio in my desktop, but I'm recording it through my camera, the audio from my speakers, so I'm going to kind of sync them together. And um, I have another camera right here. What you're looking at is the Palstar HF Auto. And amplifier is up. Let's uh, try to test.
is the frequency in use November, November 4, 4 Victor, Victor Foxtrot, Foxtrot Romeo. Romeo. N4 VFR 123 3, 2, 1 N4 VFR One two three three two one November four Victor Foxtrot Romeo and four VFR testing one two three three two one November four Victor Foxtrot Romeo testing one two three three two one okay ten pound of power and four VFR. I have a little bit of RF in my signal and for VFR clear. Yeah, I do hear RF in my headset and uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know, there's so much factors going on. All this, the toroids and the, and the ferrite beads that I put on. And I don't think uh, it helped a bit. So I'm going to take those off and uh, normal it back up the way I had it. And it's probably the croak. The, the audio is too loud. But let me uh, just end the desktop here and I'll talk to you uh, what my evaluations, uh, what I saw. Well, my final thoughts. I did all this effort trying to eliminate that RF hum and it, it's still there. So I'm still gonna keep all the ferrite beads and the toroids because I can use that for future projects. But for now, I'm gonna take it all apart and put it back the way it was originally. And I'm just gonna have to uh, work with it or find another day where I can actually troubleshoot it. Um, it's gotta be I think it's because of the close proximity of my amplifiers and my audio equipment. If you take a look here, you got the amplifier over here. Okay, the Mercury Lux, the tuner, the cable goes right out here. Right behind me is that my junction box. And then the 05 antenna is just right behind here, behind this wall. I'm not, I'm not using it right now, but I'm just using the sky loop. And, uh, my audio equipment is right here. That's the Scarlett, my Dell Audio, my speakers, and my subwoofers down underneath on the left side of me. So, um, kind of frustrated. I spent all this couple hours putting it together, trying to eliminate this, and now it's still there. It's still present. And when I tested it on 20 meters on uh, sideband, uh, putting in some power, I did hear some RF, uh, RF into my audio, in my headset when I was transmitting. 73s, thank you for watching. My name is Darren. My call sign, N4VFR, and we'll catch you in the next video.